shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand. The snare of the fowler will never capture you, and famine will. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat at uh, welcome sa ating uh, mini recollection at uh, mahalaga po tayo na magkaroon ng pagkakataon na mag magnilay-nilay lalong-lalo na sa panahon ito kung saan tayo ay nasa gitna pa rin ng isang uh, crisis o pandemya. Mga kapatid, ang ating uh, recollection ngayon ay uh, uh, pinagmagatang distill, no? Yan yung ating uh, Uh, session ngayon at uh, gusto ko magsimula sa isang Bible passage no sige The Lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark Glory to you O Lord that evening Jesus said to his disciples Let us cross to the other side Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus along in a boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A violent windstorm came up. The waves were breaking into the boat so that it was quickly filling up. But he was sleeping on a cushion in the back of the boat. They woke him up and said to him, Teacher, don't you care that we are going to die? Then he got up, ordered the wind to stop, and said to the sea, Be still, absolutely still. The wind stopped blowing. And the sea became very calm. He asked them, 
Why are you such cowards? Don't you have any faith yet? They were overcome with fear and asked each other, Who is this man? Even the wind and the sea obey him. And friends, the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, the image of a sheep, a ship or, 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 or a boat in the scriptures, it, it represents journey. No? Uh, whenever you see uh, a ship or, or a boat in the passage, it, it represents life. It represents journeying. It represents community. It represents people. And then the sea represents chaos. The sea represents crisis. The sea represents difficulties. I'll give you some examples. If you remember in the Old Testament, no, um, uh, Noah and his family, they were in the boat for... 40 days again in the in the scriptures when you when you hear number 40 it's almost idiomatic 40 represents long um, uh, purification a kind of uh, um, a kind of um, a long process of uh, preparation and here uh, in the old testament we see this image of the boat of uh, with noah and his family and they were they were in the boat, of course, in the midst of this long storm, and uh, they were there for 40 days and 40 nights. Again, the ship represents life, family, community, journeying, and the sea represents chaos, problems, turmoil, difficulties in life. In our gospel today, which I read earlier, in the story, we, we, we heard Jesus with his disciples in the boat, and then a huge storm came. And of course, um, they were disturbed, and, and all the disciples were wor worried about, about dying. And, and yet, in the midst of the storm, Jesus was just sleeping in the boat. And of course, uh, he was... Uh, uh, Jesus, uh, the, the disciples uh, woke him up and, and Jesus, uh, as we know, in the end, calmed the storm. My dear friends, I thought this passage is very applicable in our experience right now as we are still in this huge storm in our life, the pandemic. This ongoing crisis has affected so many people and has taken so many lives. We never thought that this crisis would happen in our generation. I'd like to do a mega examen of what happened in 2020 just for us to, 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 to go back and see how difficult 2020 was and how we were able to navigate no? Uh, through these difficulties. If you remember, yeah, 2020 was, a, of course, uh, as we go back, and, and it was a tough year for all of us. It wasn't easy. If you remember in January of last year, no, parang tagal na, tal volcano erupted. That was in January. And then in February, if you remember, there was this huge bushfire in Australia and it was so huge that trillions of wildlife actually were um, uh, uh, documented accordingly as, as uh, uh, they perished during this wildfire. And then of course, last year, March 16, Manila was placed under ECQ lockdown due to COVID-19. And as you know, we are already uh, one year, past one year, the longest lockdown in the world. And 
it seems that now we're back to how we started. As of today, do you know that there are already 124 million cases of COVID-19 worldwide and 2,700,000 already died as of today and counting. And then last year, August 4, there was a massive explosion in Beirut. Kunalala niyo yun. And then, of course, the year ended last year with these uh, huge storms. Kinta, Roli, and Ulysses sometime in November and December. It wasn't easy. So stuff here. And of course, do not forget, last year also we lost 15 billion pesos um, from PhilHealth. kalimutan. And... By the way, as of today, there are already 126,000 a billion pesos in loans for the vaccines. But uh, Ping Lakson is ask, asking today, nasaan ka bakuna? No one was prepared for the crisis for 2020. And as a result, a lot of people are experiencing some form of distress. A lot of us are becoming anxious and depressed because millions have lost their jobs, their livelihoods, and and as a result, people became depressed, lonely, and and even even um, because we're stuck in in our homes and we cannot you know um, do our usual business and activities. A lot of people are also experiencing some form of domestic violence. An increase in there's an increase in uh, use of substance uh, and 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 drugs, and the the, the number of uh, cases of suicide has have also has also increased dramatically. It's not easy. So let me ask you, those of you watching and joining us in our mini recollection today, let me ask you. How about you? Kamusta ka na ba? Sa lahat ng ito, sa lahat ng storms na to, paano mo kinakaya? Ano yung pinakamahirap sa pinagdadaanan mo ngayon? I think mas gusto ko yung Tagalog kasi ramdam natin eh. Pag tinanong ka ng isang tao, kamusta ka na ba talaga? And today, let me ask you that question. Kamusta ka na ba talaga? Paano mo kinakaya ang lahat ng ito? Ano yung pinakamahirap sa pinagdadaanan mo ngayon? Let me just pause for a moment here and invite you to to ask yourself, kamusta na nga ba talaga ako? <laughs> How do I even manage? Think about that. Where am I drawing my strength? How do I even manage? What are the storms in my life right now? If you are to, you, to ask yourself, ano ba yung mga storms ko sa buhay ko ngayon? Just pause for a moment and if you have your journal, maybe you can write this down. And... O oh, nga, no? When was the last time kinumusta ko ang sarili ko? When was, that, when was the last time I, I complained to God heart to heart? When was the last time I told God about what I really feel right now? My dear friends, for today, let me propose three points, very simple points.
As we reflect over the gospel I read earlier, I'd like to propose three very simple points. Number one, God is with us in the midst of our storms, even if it seems quiet. Number two, we are not alone in our boats. We have each other. And number three, this storm shall come to pass. If you have your cell phones with you, please take a screenshot of this uh, guide questions as I uh, explain these points. So if you have your, your uh, cell phones with you, or please take a screenshot of this slide of these re reflection points as we proceed, no? So uh, you may now take a photo and our screenshot. God is with us in the midst of our storms, even if it seems quiet. Number two, we are not alone in our boats. We have each other. Number three, this storm shall come to pass. The first one. God is with us in the midst of our storms, even if he seems quiet. Oftentimes when troubles come to us, when we experience so much difficulty in life, these are the moments when we begin to ask questions. Lord, why? Why us? Why my family? Why me? Especially for those of us who are serving in the church, those of us who are trying to be good. Why, Lord, why, there is, why is there so much suffering in the world? Why do good people suffer? These are the questions we ask. And, and for some of us, during these difficult moments, even the best among us, we also, the truth is, we sometimes actually feel that the Lord is quiet. That the Lord sometimes is seemingly absent. And that's why in the psalm, we read this psalm is saying, Lord, why are you hiding from me? Hide not your face from me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Just like in our gospel today, in the passage today, the disciple told Jesus, Lord, don't you care that we're going to die? Lord, do you really care about my family, about me, about what's happening now? Lord, I have nothing to provide for my family at those, as of this point. Lord, my, my, my mother is sick. Lord, my sister is jobless. Lord, do you care? These are the real questions that we say. And these are the real prayers that we really want to tell the Lord. But our passage today is reminding us that the Lord's quiet presence does not mean that he is not with us. In fact, perhaps the reason why he is quiet is because he wants to listen to us. Think about that. Perhaps the Lord is quiet because he is listening. He wants us to talk. He wants us to, to, to complain to him. Lord, don't you care? But being quiet does not mean being absent. Hmm. Just like the apostles in the boat. They were scared and it's it's normal it's normal to be scared it's human to be to be afraid but being afraid does not mean not being brave in fact it is due, it is in the midst of our fear and anxiety that we can master our courage to approach god just like disciples approaching jesus waking him up Lord, don't you care that we're going to die? Do you, did you know, my dear friends, that the word, the phrase, be not afraid, fear not, appears in the entire scriptures 365 times. Can you believe that? That's one for each day of the year. 
be not afraid. I am ever with you. Fear not. You are not alone. So my dear friends, whenever you feel that the Lord is seemingly quiet, that the Lord is seemingly absent in the midst of your storms in life, He is listening. And this is precisely what Lent is all about. God, the incarnate God in the person of Jesus, joining us in our suffering so that our Christ will be His. So that we are never alone anymore. He is with us, carrying our crosses, journeying with us, accompanying us in our darkness. This is precisely the, the, the sentiment of the psalmist when he said, Even if I walk in the dark valley, I will not be afraid, for God is with me in my dark valleys, accompanying me, journeying with me. God is in the boat with me. So my dear friends, that's the first point I'd like to share. God in our boats. Number two. We are not alone in our boats. We have each other. This pandemic has really forced us, so to speak, to, to face the most essential realities in life. And we realize that we only need less in life. And we realize that the most important things in life are not really things. Family, friends, faith. Tatlong F yun, para maalala natin. Family, friends, faith. Most of the people during this time have come back to prayer. Most families this day, they, these days, they come to pray the rosary again together. And what do they pray? Lord, keep my family safe from all harm, from any sickness. Gr Lord, grant us healing. And then we realize that indeed we are not alone in life. We have each other. But the reality is, oftentimes, we also forget the people who are always there for us because we are used to their presence already. For example, our family members, our friends who are reaching out to us. And oftentimes, we don't really appreciate their presence because they are used to their presence. They are like the air. They're always there, but... We need them actually. And without them, this crisis, this problem, this difficulty that we are experiencing could have been worse. And so my dear friends, for the second point, the invitation is this. Let us go back over the past year, and let us ask ourselves, who were the people who journeyed with me in my boat in the midst of the storm? Maybe it's time during this Lent to make them know that you appreciate them, to let them know that they have made your journey easier, to let them know that they have brought you closer to God. And so the invitation is, as we reflect during this Lent season of Lent, maybe 
try to reach out to them express your gratitude to them by giving a te- by giving a call or sending a text message of gratitude letting the person know that we are thankful for their presence in our boats and surely you are also the same to other people you see oftentimes um uh we we feel that you know um we have to be strong for each other especially for the people under our care like parents and teachers who are doing online classes um you know when we have to when we have um, people under our care we have to be strong no uh, we don't show sometimes our 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 fear our anxiety to them because we want them you not know, to 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 be strong as well especially parents you know you know this very well we don't we don't show our weakness to them because we need to be strong for our family we need to be strong for our students but we know deep inside we're also scared deep inside we also have our questions deep inside we also have our doubts deep inside we also cry and yet we have to be strong for each other so for 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 those of us who are feeling sad for those of us who are feeling alone the invitation for the second point is take a look around baka may nakalimutan tayo baka we're looking at the wrong direction take a look around take a take a look at what we have already take a look at the people around you already take a look at the people who are trying to reach out to us and yet we're pursuing them away remember this pandemic could have been worse worse without them So if you are going to do um, the Ignatian exam Ignatian Ignatian contemplation of this passage if you're going if I'm going to ask you right now can you do can you imagine yourself in your boat in the midst of the storm and then if I'm going to ask you right now sino sino ang kasama mo sa boat na yan who are the people in your boat accompanying you even if they are scared as well nevertheless they are with you that's the second point my dear friends we are never alone in our boats we have each other and so the invitation is for us to be extra aware of their presence and not only that but to this time during this lent to maybe reach out to them and be grateful to them express our gratitude express our appreciation to each other and thank god for these people who are always there for us it could have been worse without them that's the second point and lastly this storm shall come to pass my dear friends no matter how big the storm may be ondoy mapaondoy yan mapayolanda yan mapayulisis yan maparoli yan mapasendong yan no matter how big the storm is remember my dear friends all storms come to pass Walang habang buhay na unos. Walang habang buhay na bagyo. All storms come to pass. And so no matter how bad our situation is right now, tell yourself, all storms come to pass. These two shall come to pass. Why? Why? Because in our story today, the Lord is reminding us that He calms all storms. He calms 
all stormy seas of our lives. Gaano man kahirap ang ating pinagdaraanan ngayon, pagdadaanan lang natin. Unless gusto niyong tumambay, <laughs> wag naman sana. And imagine the Lord, again, doing the Ignatian imagination, imaginative prayer. Imagine God stretching His arms like this and commanding the storms of your life. Be still. Absolutely still. I am the Lord your God. Be not afraid. Totoo, mahirap. In fact, when we are in the midst of crisis in our lives, things do not really make sense. Even the best among us, when, when, when adversities, problems come to visit us, it's very hard to make sense. Lord, hanggang kailan ito? Lord, we're back to one. Lord, we're back to start. Lockdown na ulit. Paano na yung kabuhayan namin? Paano na, Lord? Paano na yung aming... Paano na yung... Mga, mga may sakit? Paano na yung mga doktor na isang taon ng pagod sa pagtatrabaho? Paano na, Lord? And kahit na wala tayong sagot, even if we don't have the answers to our questions, the invitation for us is not really to look for answers. The invitation is to trust in God. And so the grace we beg during times of crisis, during times of difficulties and storms in our lives, is not understanding primarily. Of course, we wish to understand. But maybe it's hard to understand precisely because we are still in the storm. But the grace we can beg is not understanding but trust in God's will and power. Lord, Sana matuto akong magtiwala na Ikaw, Panginoon, ang Diyos at makapangyarihan sa lahat. So remember this, my dear friends, no matter how big your problems are, no matter how big your storms are, God is bigger than all of this. He comes the storms of our lives. He is in charge. And for the meantime, while we are still navigating through these storms, the invitation for us is to trust. Magtiwala sa Kanya. Magtiwala sa Diyos. No matter how big the storms are, these storms shall come to pass because God is in control, because God is in charge, because God is powerful. And He calms all the storms of our lives. So my dear friends, those are the three points, simple points I wish to share to you and I wish that you will pray over during this time of crisis to give us some consolation. And this is precisely what Lent is all about. God in our boat. God with us in the midst of, a storm, in, in the midst of our storms. And so, my dear friends, let me let me invite you to to pray and reflect, and uh, let me invite you to spend some time of prayer at this point. Ask yourselves, what storms are you facing right now? What realities in your life now that you find difficult to accept? especially during this ongoing COVID crisis. Pangalawang tanong, how are you able to navigate? How do you cope? Where do you draw your strength? And if you feel like complaining like the apostles, Lord, don't you care that we're going to die? Go ahead. Go ahead. Speak from the heart and complain to Him. 
and know that He is listening to all our prayers. So take a screenshot of this slide so you may use this in your prayer periods in the next days. What storms are you facing right now? What realities in your life now that you find difficult to accept during this ongoing COVID crisis? How are you able to navigate? How do you cope? Where do you draw your strength? If you feel like complaining to God, go ahead, speak from the heart, and complain to Him. And then, my dear friends, I invite you to pause for a moment And imagine God, imagine Jesus after you complaining to him about the storms in your life. Imagine Jesus extending his hands like this, his arms like this, and commanding all your storms to be quiet, to be still. So as we do this, as we spend some minutes of quiet and uh, of 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 uh, prayer and reflection. Let us listen to this uh, song inspired by this passage. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.
My dear friends, um, remember those three points. God is with us in the midst of our storms, even if it seems quiet. We are not alone really in our boats. We have each other. And this storm, no matter how big this could be, all storms come to pass. Do you know that uh, there's another incident in the Bible when, again, the, as the apostles, the disciples were in the boat and they were again in the Sea of Galilee and there was another storm. And this time, Jesus was not sleeping, but Jesus was not with them. And then there was a huge storm and Jesus came to rescue them and he walked on water. I'm sure you know that passage also. And of course, he invited Peter to step out of the boat and Peter, of course, stepped out of the boat. And for, for momentarily, for, for some moments, he was, Peter was actually walking on water because he was fixing his eyes on Jesus. The moment Peter lost sight of Jesus, he saw the huge storms. He was overwhelmed. He lost his, he lost his focus on Jesus and he was overwhelmed. He looked at the big waves. And then he started drowning. Again, remember what I said? The waves, the sea represents chaos, represents problems. The moment we focus on our problems and lose sight of God, we find ourselves drowning. Now, the invitation there is this. Fix your eyes on Jesus in the storm. And you'll find yourself walking on water with Jesus, no matter how huge the storms are. But my dear friends, just in case, just in case you find yourself drowning, remember, just like in the story of Peter, Jesus will save us. He will stretch out his hand and pull us out of our problems, of our chaos, and save us. So we can learn to walk on the waves of our lives. You know, when I was, uh, um, after being ordained uh, four years ago, I was sent to the new believe to, to the new believed prisons as one of the chaplains there. After a year, um, of being one of the chaplains of New Believe Prisons, um, I, I, I was assigned already here. I was, uh, I was missioned to, to Ateneo High School as the campus ministry head. And on the day I, 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 was, uh, uh, I said goodbye to the inmates of Believe It, one of, the, one of the inmates, very young, I think he was 23 at that time, uh, he, he made a painting and he gave it as a gift to me, as a farewell gift. 
and it's a huge acrylic uh, acrylic painting huge acrylic painting and i was so happy with the painting i placed this painting right inside my office so when students get inside the office the first thing they will see is this painting and let me show you this painting There you go. This is the painting that uh, this inmate uh, gifted me. He 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 drew. He he he, he uh, painted this um, beautiful art piece, artwork as a gift, and I place it right uh, outside the, uh, my office, but inside the the reception area, so that when students visit. The first thing that they'll see after opening the door is this huge painting. And as you see, this painting is Jesus walking on water, but extending his arm, reaching out to Peter, saving Peter. And the, 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 what's so moving about this painting is, is the perspective of this painting is Peter's. Meaning to say, when you look at the painting, you are Peter, being saved by Jesus. And look at the face of Jesus here. He seems to be calm and smiling even. As if telling you, everything's going to be okay. Hold, hold on to my hand. Everything is going to be all right. And I think this is a really uh, nice uh, reflection of of uh, of um, the Bible passage, and and well, I, I learned that this painting is really inspired by the original um, uh, painting uh, by a Korean artist, and I uh, this this um, inmate was maybe perhaps was able to to get, get to see this painting, and and he so to speak had his own version of this painting, but what. Uh, but of course, some of my students uh, would, would recognize the, the gospel story, but some of them will say, Father, uh, who is that? Is he Aquaman? <laughs> but anyway, so just to, um, to summarize my, my sharing, my points today, I hope na are tayo, no? I hope na nakatulong. Kasi nga, um, a lot of us are really, uh, we thought that things are getting better. But of course, um, this week we are uh, um, we are feeling as if we're back to start. No lockdown na ulit, from uh, 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 GCQ na ulit, and and uh, parang walang katapusan. But I hope this mini recollection nakatulong sa atin to console us, uh, to to give us some hope, and most importantly to trust in God as we continue to navigate. <laughs> In the stormy seas of our lives, and uh, I'd like to end my um, reflection, my mini recollection, with this beautiful prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God, give me the the grace to accept with serenity the things that cannot be changed. Courage to change the things which should be changed. And the wisdom to distinguish the one from the other. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as a pathway to peace, Taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Amen.